Graphing Lines Review. So our question says graph each of the following lines. And the first one given here is y equals 4 over 5x minus 4. So the basic equation of a line that we've been talking about is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So in this equation here, we have y equals 4 fifths x minus 4. So 4 fifths is my slope. And the negative 4 is my y-intercept. So there are many different methods for graphing. You can use a table of values. You can use x and y-intercepts. But the one I like the best is using the slope and the y-intercept to find some points on the graph and then draw your line. So when you're graphing, the first thing you want to do is start with your y-intercept, so that negative 4. So the y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis. On my graph, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, right? Positive numbers go this way. So I do 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And going the other way would be negative. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And on the y-axis going up and down, the positive numbers go up. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And negatives go down. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if we have a y-intercept of negative 4, that means on the y-axis, the vertical one, we're going to make a point at negative 4. That's where our graph is going to start. From there, we use the slope to help us figure out where the rest of the points go. So slope is calculated doing delta y over delta x, or change in y over change in x, or rise over run. So the change in the y values, the up and down values, are 4. And it's a positive 4. So what that means is we're going to add 4 to our y values. And then delta x, right, that's the change in x. It's a positive 5. We're going to add 5 to our x values. So if I start here at negative 5, we're going to add 4 onto our y values, which really means we're going to move up 1, 2, 3, 4 squares. I apologize, that is a y-intercept of negative 4. So we're going up 1, 2, 3, 4 squares up, and then that 5 means we're going to add 5 onto the x, or we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 squares over to the right. right? So what we did was we followed the slope, delta y, the change in y, we're going up 4, and then change in x, we're going over to the right 5. And then we do it again, right? So we keep following that slope. So from that point, I'm going to go up another 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we're going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to the right. And then I've run out of space. So what I like to do is I like to actually work that pattern backwards. So I know that we're doing 4 and 5. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either start counting down 4 and back 5, or you can rotate your graph around 180 degrees and just keep doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then once you've made as many points as you possibly can, what we want to do is draw a line. So using a straight edge, a ruler, something that's straight, we're going to draw a line that goes from one side of the grid all the way to the other, and it's going to have arrows on the ends to show that there are more points if you kept going, but that we've just hit the end of the grid. Okay. So to graph this line, what we did was we plotted our y-intercept at negative 4, and then we used our slope up 4 and over 5 to get the remainder of our points. All right, the second line that we're going to graph here, I have 2y plus x minus 4 equals 0. Now, this is not in slope and y-intercept form. 
So before we can graph this, if I want to use that method, I need to rearrange it to get y by itself on one side. So if I want to get the y all by itself, I'm going to start by moving the x and the 4 to the other side. So we've got plus x, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And I have a subtract 4, so I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So I get 2y equals uh, negative x. And 0 plus 4 is just 4. And then from there, I'm going to divide everything by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1y, or just y. Negative x divided by 2. Secretly in front of that negative x, there's a 1 hiding there. There's a little negative 1. So this is going to become negative 1 divided by 2, since it doesn't work out nicely, x. And then 4 divided by 2 is 2. So the equation of our line in slope y-intercept form is negative 1 over 2x plus 2, right? Because negative 1 divided by 2 gave me a decimal. I left it as a fraction, and that was a little 1 hiding in front of that x. So if I take a look at this, my slope is negative 1 half, and the negative always goes with the numerator, and my y-intercept is positive 2. So when I go to graph, I'm going to start at my y-intercept of positive 2. So on the y-axis, we're going to start at 1, 2, positive 2, right there. And then for the slope, it is delta y over delta x, so my y values, instead of going up and getting bigger this time, there's a minus sign, which means they're going to get smaller. So instead of adding 1, we're actually going to subtract 1 and come down 1. And then the 2, we're still going to the right 2, so we're always going to go to the right. So this is going to be down 1 and right 2. So starting at my point, the negative means we're going to go down 1 square, and then we're going to go right two squares. We do it again, down one square, right two squares. We just keep following that pattern of going down one and right two until we hit the end of the grid. And then we can either work that same pattern backwards or you can rotate your page 180 degrees and just keep going down one and right two. And then all we need to do is draw our line. Oops. That's why it's always good to do all those points. So if your ruler moves and your line ends up a little bit off, it's not the end of the world. And that's graphing lines.